138 MMA here to give you a little peek behind the curtain during this week away from the world of mixed martial arts that we are currently experiencing. Obviously, there are no UFC fights or Bellator fights this weekend. There's no Dana White's Contender Series this Tuesday because, well, this season ended. So we're just left with nothing. So I've got a hypothetical matchup between Fighter A and Fighter B to give you a peek behind the curtain to show you what I use to break down a fight, how I come up with the picks that I come up with, and kind of really show you the art of the pick from my perspective. And if you disagree with this, with if you don't like the way that I do this, I would love to hear your feedback because maybe I can improve my way of doing it. But at the same time, I think it's pretty concrete. It's pretty solid. My picks are generally pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and break down Fighter A versus Fighter B in this hypothetical matchup to show you what I'm talking about. So, so for here, for Fighter A and Fighter B, Obviously, these aren't real fighters. I don't know of anybody who would name their child Fighter A or Fighter B. So if you've ever met that person, please show them this video. They'll be very impressed to know that I'm talking about them. But otherwise, we've got their fictitious records of 5-0 and versus 4-1. and Now, typically, it's just their 5 on in. Uh, I don't usually put up the full record of a fighter unless either A, it's less than 5 fights, or B, it's the Dana White's Contender Series, where we're trying to kind of gauge experience with that as well. You assume once that they're in the UFC, they've got enough experience to get to the UFC. Um, and if they don't, well, you're going to see it in the record being less than five fights. However, on the Dana White's Contender Series, if there's a big mismatch in experience, whether that be positive or negative, I would like to highlight that. So I do. But otherwise, it's going to be the last five fights. And typically, I'll point that out in the video, as you've probably seen if you've watched any of my videos. So cool. Let's move right along to the attributes. Now, for the attributes, the thing that I have here, um, I have the uh, pluses and minuses for attributes. Now, these, to me, are things that are fit purely physical. So, like a height or reach advantage. Um, so, the po positive would be a height or reach advantage. A height or reach or disadvantage would be the minus, obviously. Um, you typically, re reach is usually favorable. There are some instances where it's not, but in the fight, typically, your reach is, is favorable. So, for that, I usually put it as a positive. Uh, in addition to those, we have things like your age, age. If you're exceptionally old, you're probably getting the negative. If you're youthful, you'll get the positive encounter to an age of the, the elder fighter. If it's both fighters are in their twenties, I'm not going to point that out. It's just irrelevant. So I just leave it off the board because you don't need to know if one fighter is 26 and the other one's 24. It's not important, but other things for attributes will have Cardio, we'll have chin, things like that. Those are going to be the attributes. And I look at those first, typically, um, the ones that I can tell without watching them fight anyway, like the height and the reach, things like that. I like to look at that, get those out of the way, jot them down in my notes. Um, the things like the chin or the cardio, I'll find out from watching the, uh, the videos of their fights. And that kind of comes over with their skills. Now, sometimes I will highlight their accolades, as I did in the uh, last Dana White's Contender Series uh, episode we had, where I highlighted that Bo Nickel was a three-time NCAA wrestling champion. That's an important accolade to put out, I think. But if I, but I'm not going to put out all of the accolades from everybody. That one is just an interesting tidbit, and we don't have a lot to go off of considering you'd only had two fights prior. I had to fill some some space there on the board, and that's an important thing because that does show that uh, the high level wrestling that he has. Since we didn't really get a lot of um, a lot of samples of that in his MMA career so far, with the limited number of fights, but. Typically, I'm only looking at skills that they've shown in the cage. I don't care how good you look on a heavy bag when you're punching your heavy bag. I don't care how good you look in the mitts. What matters is if you're in the cage, and that's what we're going off of. So for my channel, that's what you're going to see. If I highlight somebody's skill, it's not going to be based on what they show on their Instagram. I might check that out, but if they're not showing it in the cage, I'm not going to write that down. So, so my skills, you know, striking skills, grappling skills, more specific uh, a lot of times we don't have that because small sample size. But when we have a bigger sample size, I like to go into the the more more defined skills. Okay, particularly striking offense or defense, or a jab is particularly good, uh, a teep kick, something like that, or uh, lacks lacks ability to counter, la or uh, turtles up when when hit with with shots. Okay, something like that. Those are positive or, my, or negative skills that. I will put down on here and the, the some of them you'll get more in depth some of them you won't that's just based on the, the sample size that i've got from their fights from watching their, their videos and sometimes it's just irrelevant so i leave it off but i mean not that their skills are irrelevant sometimes that it's, it's just a skill that isn't that doesn't matter for the particular fight that we have um so there we go so we can do that so i break down the skills and then we go into the style so let's say fighter a is a wrestler uh, 
likes to take down ground and pound. Okay, fighter A likes to do ground and pound. Fighter B is traditionally a Muay Thai fighter, and he uses strictly his Muay Thai, tries to defend the takedown. If he does get on the ground, his primary goal is to get back up, okay? So I'm going to put, how does that style play into it, okay? Is his wrestling good enough to take this, this fighter B down? Is fighter B's takedown defense good enough to stuff fighter A's takedowns, okay? The styles, obviously fighter A wants to get the takedown, fighter B wants to stop the fight from going to the ground. That's how I'm going to basically go off the styles. Styles do tend to play a big role because not necessarily if you're, if you've got, so let's say for example, fighter A has all of the better skills. Okay. He's got, he's got skills everywhere, but fighter B has a really good head kick and two seconds into the fight kicks fighter A into the head. Fighter A is knocked out doesn't matter how good his skills were, he's knocked out. Sometimes the skills don't quite uh, tell you the full picture. The style helps with this. Now, can we know for sure whether or not fighter A is going to get kicked in the head by fighter B within the first two seconds? No, we can't. But with the style, we can say, okay, well, fighter A is a prim uh, primarily a wrestler. He wants to shoot for that takedown immediately as soon as the fight starts. If fighter B scouts this, similar to uh, Jorge Masvidal taking on Ben Askren, which broke my heart. I'm actually a Ben Askren fan. So I don't know if I just lost fans by saying that, but I'm a Ben Askren fan. But Masvidal broke my heart when he did that. Probably Ben Askren's as well, as well as his face. When he came out, hit him with the flying knee right across the cage, right out of the gate. Well, how did that work? So the style of Ben Askren is shoot a takedown immediately. And that's what we're going to pretend fighter A is doing here. Well, fighter B knows that. So fighter B has put a counter to that. And that's how, that's how Masvidal was able to knock out Ben Askren. He countered the style. So style has to play a role. Now, can I always predict if someone's going to be able to do that flying knee across the cage? No, because I think if that fight runs 10 times, I don't think that plays out the same way more than once. That is a once in a lifetime thing. A six second run across the cage at a flying knee is super rare, obviously, because it doesn't ever happen, but it did that time. And so the style there was the reason. Um, do I think that if you run that fight 10 times, Masvidal wins all 10? Absolutely not. In fact, I think Ashkin probably wins about six or seven of those just because how relentless that wrestling style is. And a guy like Masvidal, who's obviously the better striker, there's no question about it. Ashkin can't strike his way out of, a paper, out of a paper bag. But that style that he has, that grappling style, oftentimes gets the win. That's why oh, what, 40, 40 some odd percent of... UFC champions throughout history have all come from a wrestling background. So someone like Ashton against a guy who is primarily a striker in Masvidal, the style will typically say that they're going to win. So I take that into account, but the skills, the attributes, all of these things come into play. And that's kind of how I get my predictions. And when I'm making my pick, I also like to put a little, uh, little asterisk down here for anything of note, last minute fighter change, um, something like, uh, so-and-so's hometown or like some, any sort of, I don't always do the hometown, but like some, something of note that may play a role in the fight, but isn't really a pro or con for either fighter. So for me, that's kind of how I get my, my, my picks. And when I'm doing this, when I make a pick, that's not to say that that person is going to win. Absolutely. Because obviously this is a fight and things happen, but I'm trying to say, okay, out of say a hundred times or a thousand times, I think fighter A beats fighter B more than fighter B beats fighter A. And I think that's the best you can really ask for when you're making a prediction on a fight. Now, could I give you my number out of a thousand times? I think fighter A wins 583. Yeah, I could do that, but I'm probably not going to. That's, uh, that's, a, little bit, that's a little bit too in-depth. I don't think you guys want to get that. And plus, I would think myself in circles, but was it 583? 584. How many is he going to get? So for me, this is the way I look at a fight. Let me know what you guys think of this in the comments. Like this video if you like the way that I do this. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see me break down some other fights in this manner. I'm going to be doing this for all of the Dana White's Contender Series fights, all of the Bellator fights, and all of the UFC fights at this point in the channel. At some point, I would love to get into PFL, LFA, the whole works, maybe even one championships at some point. Uh, I do admit that one championships is tough for me because A, I've got zero basis on a lot of that. And they do a lot of like mix between uh, Muay Thai fights and MMA. And I'll be honest, I can't break down a uh, Muay Thai fight as well as I can an MMA fight. So 
there's that. But PFL, I really want to, I don't have the time. LFA, I really want to, I don't have the time. I work a lot of hours, uh, roughly 60-ish a week, give or take. So I'm doing this in addition to that. Uh, it takes a lot. So, uh, But anyway, let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think about my, my way of kind of breaking this down. I don't know any other way that you could really do it and get accurate picks, but if you've got some suggestions, I'm open to hearing them. I may not take them. Please don't be offended if I don't, but I may or I may not. So like I said, like the video, let me know in the comments. If you can, upload a picture of your notebook full of your notes, just as an example. Obviously, they're all fights that are over now because, well, we're out of fights this weekend. But, you know, I would love to see if you guys are sitting here taking notes off of these videos, whether it's mine or another channel's. Um, there are some other really good channels out there as well. I did that video with Artem MMA Analysis. Real nice guy. Uh, took care of me. You know, let me on his channel when I only have, what, 300 and some odd subscribers. So that's really cool of him because he's got well over 2,500 or something like that. So really nice of him. So I'm giving him a shout out here. I appreciate it very, very much. Artem, it's not his real name, but that's what he wants me to stick with calling him. So keeping the mystery alive. So I appreciate that from him. Um, and you know, someday when this channel's kicking butt, just like his, he'll be back on here, I'm sure. And, or he'll be on here. We'll be back to working together and breaking down fights. I would love to get on there with some other YouTube fight picks folks. So if you guys know them, tell them that you want 138 MMA to do their show as well. I've rambled too much at the end here, but do me that solid, like it. I will see you with the weekend fights coming up. Uh, Arujao versus Grasso. That's the next one we've got. I will see you when those fights are coming out. I should have something up by this weekend, Monday, Tuesday at the latest of next week, but probably this weekend. So 